Well, non-imperial empire uh, sounds uh, like contradiction in terms. Uh, empire is about structure. Imperialism is a kind of policy you have, but you see, empires always impose domestic constraints on formerly sovereign actors. The European Union does it. Look, of course, why he said uh, non-imperial? Because nobody wants to be associated with, with the legacy of, 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 of some colonial empires. Uh, the, the, the European Union does not uh, ex exploit economically other countries or, or it doesn't propagate racism. Nevertheless, uh, it, 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 in other senses, it, it of course uh, manifestly has kind of imperial policies and structure. In Westphalian state, you, you have overlap between various functional borders. You have a central government which is in charge of certain territory and, 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 uh, and borders of economic transactions, of, of political community and uh, uh, of culture and law are all the same. And all, all those are sort of contained within a certain system organized under the central government. In the European Union, like in many empires, particularly in the Middle Ages, you don't have this overlap. You have some countries which uh, belong to Schengen, uh, uh, other countries to EMU, other countries uh, just to European community, and so on and so on. And in foreign affairs, there are just coalitions of the willing. Or... And, uh, and, 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 and a European presidency is also not just in Brussels. You know, it, it, we know that today uh, we talk about Frankfurt Group, yeah? which, uh, which is basically something outside the treaty and uh, and, cons uh, and, and comprises uh, uh, two prime ministers, Merkel and, and Sarkozy, plus uh, Mr. Barroso, Van Rompuy, the head of the IMF, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and Mr. Juncker also. So you see, it's a much more complicated system than the Westphalian system uh, ever was. Uh, and of course, you can call it sui generis, but if, uh, if you call it uh, uh, sui generis, then it's very difficult uh, to say what it is, uh, it's, it, anything goes, so to speak. And I think this is uh, too simplistic to say sui generis, therefore it is not comparable to anything else. Oh, no, no, they are not really in charge of everything. Uh, in, some, in foreign policy they can be, but not, for instance, in, in, uh, in, uh, in trade, external mm. trade is, is, is certainly not controlled by any single country and even in foreign policy they have to make deals but of course different uh, fields of cooperations have different arrangements it depends and we will see what will come out of this current crisis in, within the eurozone what kind of uh, new arrangements we will mm -hmm. get um, the important thing is that the imperial uh, sort of uh, paradigm emphasize uh, inequality and power something which is kind of in uh, in EU discourse put to the shade. Nobody talks about power by institutional power. And and formally all states are equal. But but we know that this is not the case. Look now who is making decisions. Of course, but, but what does it mean overstretch? You know, uh, you can say overstretch should be applied to, to, to monetary union, not to enlargement. In the monetary union, they uh, they uh, they basically uh, created a, a currency without giving uh, uh, the the the, the, un the monetary union the, the means of governance. So you can say here uh, you can argue there was overstretch, not really with enlargement, but uh, we even in the case of monetary union, we don't know how the story will end. You can always think that with all functional sort of deepening or territorial uh, widening, that there is an, uh, there is a, a, an overstretch. But, but, but there is no theory which would be credibly explaining when the moment is really reached. You know, the, the, the idea of optimal currency union, you know, that the nine member states of currency unions, the optimal, is the most silly uh, piece of statistical theory I've ever seen.
understand mm. he, he has the point. Of course, the union doesn't really have hard power, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't have power. I mean, military power is one of many powers. You know, in, in the Middle Ages, uh, the most successful uh, uh, power politics, in, in particular territorial politics, extending territory, was not through sword but through marriages. You know, there are various ways of exercising power. Well, its its means are chiefly civilian, so to speak. But all empires are normative empires. You know, they all have a kind of civilizing mission. You know, they they want to <laughs> to put it crudely, convert barbarian into good citizens, and uh, uh, this is a characteristic features of all empires. But the question is, of course, do they have alternative? Of course not. You know, because if environment is unstable. It is better, basically, to, to export laws and, 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 and certain rules of behavior, uh, a peaceful behavior, a cooperative behavior, than, than just to conquer uh, those, 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 those uh, territories. So, uh, it's easy to be cynical about civilizing missions, but I, I believe civilizing missions are the normal uh, state of affairs in all these kind of situations. Oh, there, there is always a mixture of both. There's always a mixture of both. And actually, the whole nature of civilizing mission is that, that, uh, that, that you believe that, that what you do is not just good for you, but the others too. And uh, there is this altruistic uh, element. Uh, and uh, of course, there's a mixture of two. But of course, in reality, there is also a lot of self-interest. But, but those, this is not a zero-sum game. There is sometimes an arrogance in preaching certain norms, you know, or uh, there is a double standard applying certain norms to some and not the other. The barbarians, but not to the metropolis, you know. I'm not an astrologer. I don't know. And there is evidence that, that anything can happen, which is bad enough. If anything can happen, we can end up with more integrations or we, we can end up with, with disintegration. I don't believe that, that we are doomed to disintegration. But I don't believe in, 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 in this kind of optimistic theory that Europe always comes uh, out of each crisis stronger rather than weaker. This is, the, the, uh, the, there is no justifications for that kind of optimism. But it depends. We will see. Of course, yes. yes it is realistic. It's sad. It is not necessarily the most uh, probable scenario, but it's possible. Look, if Euro disintegrates for one reason or another, yeah, this will probably create a lot of bad blood within the entire European Union. Uh, and there will be a lot of recriminations, blame game, uh, and of course major actors like Germany will be at the centre of, of this blame game. Uh, but also, and, and, and countries which now work hand in hand with Germany, like Poland or, or France, might totally change their opinion in the situations of a break of the monetary union and the implications of, of, of this break for, for, for other economies. And, and then we might be back into Westphalia. And we know what is the history of Westphalia. And the history of Westphalia is uh, pregnant uh, not just conflict but violence too. I'm sorry to say that. Is it the most uh, probable option? Uh, pro hopefully not, but I wouldn't exclude that. As we don't know. What I know is that those solutions uh, might improve uh, 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 budgetary balances or imbalances, but not necessarily stimulate growth and certainly create a lot of social and political problems. Besides, they are probably not addressing the root of the problem in some of those countries. You know, if, if everybody tells uh, uh, you who study Greece uh, 
or Italy for that matter, that the culture of patronage in politics and, and, and economics is responsible for, for, for the malaise in, in Greece. Well, will you change uh, this culture by, by policies uh, advocated by IMF and, and ECB today, which are basically about monetary issues? Okay, they talk about increased competition, transparency, but, but, will you, will you, uh, but basically they talk about, you know, uh, the balancing books and selling public effort, assets. And who has money to, to buy public assets? The same people who manipulated, who were at the top of, of, of the, the patronage pyramid. I mean, so as you can see, this is a very sort of short-sighted policy which might or might not address problems of, of financial uh, crunch, but not necessarily stimulate growth or uh, solve uh, political problems. They, on the contrary, they might create political problems and perpetuate cultural patterns which were behind uh, a lot of problems which we, which we encountered. So, so you see, uh, we don't have a paradigm which will encompass those different fields and, 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 and create the golden solutions. And here, uh, you see, the problem is that also the different actors uh, uh, try to assume sovereign rights of, of what is going on and they work along different logic and agenda. You know, who is so sovereign in Greece today? Are, is sovereign Greek, Greek, Greek parliament? Is, is, is the EMU sovereign here? Or are these sovereign markets? This, you know, this legally a Greek government. But you know uh, how much choice Greek people and government had recently to adopt certain policies, yeah, and uh, and uh, and they work along different logic. The markets are interested basically in in balancing the books, and the EU is 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 basically interested in institutional reform to get Greece out of the situation. And of course, the government of Greece is is interested in 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 in. in in keeping some kind of public support to survive, you know. And those policies which are necessary for those to meet their objectives are not necessary in harmony. No, there is overlapping political and, 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 and legal authority here. It's not, you know, uh, that 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 Mrs. Uh, uh, Merkel and Mr. Sarkozy can decide and and get their way, and and they also have to negotiate with with the domestic constituencies too. Uh, of course, uh, Mrs. Uh, Sarkozy and Merkel probably have more influence on the course of, of affairs than Mr. Barroso, who, who is certainly not the central player here, but but but. But, but I wouldn't look at, at personalities here. I would look more in the processes here and actors in, understood in broader terms, you know. Yeah, I certainly think so. Yes, I, th I think because uh, not only we, we basically promoted the regulations of market uh, as a principle of economic policy, but we made um, ourselves uh, increasingly reliable financial services. If you look at this country, you know, how it's not manufacturers which generate growth, but services, in particular financial services. So, you know, so of course you are very much dependent on, on those people, but also you are a sort of prisoner of, of, of the world view. Read Financial Times, one of the most uh, sophisticated newspapers in the world, uh, and yet uh, the, the percentage of article which which, which focuses on, on, on monetary policies is so much, uh, you know, uh, higher than than those focusing on macroeconomic policies, and how much they write about social problems, very little. So you know, there is certain interests and preoccupations which dominate uh, this group of people. Uh, don't be surprised. But then don't be surprised that you get somewhere riots on the street of people who, who said enough. <music>